The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. And now a word of interest to smokers. For years you've heard talk, double talk, words about noses, words about throats, empty promises. Cigarette advertising is filled with them. Now this smoke screen of double talk is swept away by facts, not claims, facts. The facts are that Lucky's fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco goes into a cigarette that's made better, that's fully packed, that has no annoying loose ends to spoil the taste. A cigarette that's made better in every way. Yes, the facts are that Lucky Strike, by a wide margin, is the best made of all five principal brands of cigarettes. Facts proven by a month-after-month quality comparison based on tests certified to be impartial, fair, and identical. And these tests, these facts, are verified by leading laboratory consultants. For example, Foster D. Snell Incorporated of New York City reports, In our opinion... The properties measured are all important factors affecting the taste of cigarette smoke. We conclude that Lucky Strike is the best made of the five major brands. Yes, Lucky's taste better. Always so mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. So prove to yourself the proven facts. Don't be misled by the smoke screen of claims made by other cigarettes. Remember the facts. And enjoy really fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in the cigarette that's made better. The cigarette that tastes better. Lucky Strike. Try a carton today. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Okay, Phil. Phil, Phil, okay, hold it. Hold it, hold it, Phil, hold it. Stop, stop it, stop What's the music. wrong now, Jackson? Nothing, we've rehearsed enough. We ought to relax a little before we go on the air. Yeah, we'll be on in ten minutes. Don, I want to talk to the audience before we go on the air, so when the studio fills up, let me know, will you? I'll be in my dressing room. Okay, Jack. This way for the Jack Benny program. Don't crowd, please. Single file coming through the door, please. Come on, Annabelle. We want to get seats down in front so Mr. Benny can hear me laugh at his jokes. Okay, Uncle Rochester. How come Mr. Benny gave you the day off? Day off? When you hear the jokes I have to laugh at, I'm working, honey. I'm working. (laughs) Do I have to laugh too, Uncle Rochester? Yeah, yeah. I'll nudge you with my elbow. If it's a little joke, you just giggle. Uh Uh-huh. And if Mr. Benny tells a big joke, you laugh real loud. Well, what'll I do if it's kind of a medium joke? You don't tell them that way, honey. They're either good or bad. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll give you the elbow. Now, now follow me. There are two seats in the second row. Say, Phil, Phil, I want to ask you something. Your orchestra was beginning to sound pretty good, and then all of a sudden you took the harp out of the band. Why did you do that? I had to get rid of that harp, Jackson. Why? I was afraid that someday Remley might wake up, look through it, and say, Holy smoke, I'm in again. <laughs> Well, that's ridiculous. A harp wouldn't make him think he was in jail. Oh, no. Two months ago, he cut three of the strings with a hacksaw. (laughs) No. Then he climbed through. The spotlight hit him, and he yelled, Don't shoot! I give up! (laughs) Well, that's the most ridiculous thing that I've ever... Come in. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. I want to talk to you about one of the jokes I have in the script. I don't understand it. Which one? Oh, this one right here on page four. You see? Dennis, that's a very simple joke. So you say to me, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the lumberjack who was always chasing girls? I say no, and you say he was sort of a timber wolf. Get it? I wish I was taller. Those jokes go over my head. (laughs) You're lucky, kid. It hit me right in the face. (laughs) Look, Dennis, when we come to the joke, I'll just throw you the lead, and you say he was a timber wolf. That's all. Okay, but if it doesn't get a laugh, you'll hear from my mother. Oh, get out of here, Hey, you? I'm going too, Jackson. Cheerio. Yeah. Those two make a nice pair. Bourbon and water on the brain. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wonder... Hello? Long distance? Yeah, she's here. I'll call her. Oh, Mary! Mary! Yes, Jack? Would you come into my dressing room? Okay, but you'll have to leave the door open. <laughs> now, don't be silly. You're wanted on the phone. Oh. It's long distance, Plainfield, New Jersey. Gee, it must be Mama. It's a fine time to call, five minutes before my broadcast. Oh, that's all right. She never listens to it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> your mother. 
Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. Oh, I'm fine. Gee, it's nice of you to call me. What? When we go on the air, you want me to say, Papa, dinner is ready? <laughs> but why do you want me... Oh, he's in the living room and you're not talking to him. <laughs> well, that's the silliest... Oh, quiet, Jack. Uh, what'd you say, Mama? Oh, Babe has a new boyfriend? He does? Well, he certainly is industrious. What is it, Mary? What is it? My sister Babe has a new boyfriend. He has two jobs. Two jobs? Uh, what kind of work does he do, Mama? Oh. What is it, Mary? What does he do? Well, during the day he drives a garbage truck, and at night he's a test pilot in an Airwick factory. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye, Mama. Thanks for calling. You know, Mary, your mother... Well, Jack, we'll be on the air in five minutes. If you want to talk to the audience, you better get started. Okay. Everybody on stage. Well, it won't be long now, Annabelle. You know, Uncle Rochester, Mr. Benny don't look so very old. I think he's tall, cute, and handsome. You're looking at Mr. Harris, honey. His hair is curly. <laughs> well, what kind of hair has Mr. Benny got? Mr. Benny's hair is... Uh-oh. I'm in for it. I've still got it in my pocket. <laughs> Here he comes now, honey. Remember, laugh when I give you the elbow. Well, Jack, we'll be on the air in five seconds. Five seconds. Stand by, everybody. Take it, Phil. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who was born in February, studied economics in March, was able to retire in April, and here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and da... da achoo. Gee, I hope I'm not catching cold. Darn that Rochester. <laughs> and Don, Don, I think your introduction was a little bit exaggerated. However, I will admit that at the age of six, I did have a little money, but I earned it. As a matter of well, fact... Well, say, Mr. Benny, did you hear the one about the lumberjack? Not yet, Dennis. Later. Later. <laughs> Any, anyway, when I was a kid, Don... Any. When I was a... <laughs> when I was a kid, Don, I had to work pretty hard. Well, you're not the only one, Jackson. When I was 18 months old, my picture was in every magazine in the country. So what? Well, it wasn't easy for an 18-month-old kid to pose for all them ads. What ads? I was the baby of distinction. <laughs> Phil. I was the only kid in town who had a diaper with a hip pocket. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, look at kids. We have a very important play to do tonight, so let's get started. Uh, what's it going to be, Jack? Well, Mary, since we're at the height of the football season, I think that tonight we should do our version of that exciting play. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. My elbow slipped. <laughs> hmm. We will do our version... Our version of that famous Columbia picture, that exciting epic of the gridiron, Saturday's Hero. Now, this play will go on immediately after we... Come in. Yes? Mr. Benny, is it true that you wrote a song? <laughs> yes, yes, I did, and it has a wonderful title. It's called, When You Say I Beg Your Pardon, Then I'll Come Back to You. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Hey, do you mind if I do it? Why, no, no, not at all. Are you a singer? No, I'm an electric organ. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> An electric organ? That's awful. Well, it ain't bad when you consider I ain't even plugged in. <laughs> Oh, yes, Papa. Well, 
What a silly guy. Oh, Dennis. Oh, did you hear the one about the lumberjack who was always chasing girls? Not yet. Sing your song first. Oh, okay. He has one joke and he can't wait. Dennis, very good. You sang that beautifully. Now, Dennis, now. Oh, boy, here it comes. <clears throat> Say, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the lumberjack who was always chasing girls? No, Dennis. What about the lumberjack who was always chasing girls? His name was Mr. Wolf, and he was full of timber. <laughs> what? He doesn't get it, folks. Mr. Wolf, timber. <laughs> Dennis, stop wagging your tail and sit down. <laughs> we rehearsed it for four days and then he gets it wrong. Oh, well. And now for our play, take it down. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our version of that thrilling Columbia picture, Saturday's Hero, a saga of college life on the gridiron. Curtain. Music. <laughs> This is the story of thousands of stalwart young athletes who every week during the autumn of the year give their all on the football fields of the nation for the glory of their alma maters. These are Saturday's heroes. My name is Steve. Steve krasinskiewicz <laughs> I was the star quarterback at James Madison High School in Passaic, New Jersey. In my final high school game, I caught the opening kickoff and ran it back 98 yards for a touchdown. The crowd went wild. The rooting section stood up and began to cheer for me. Krasinska Vichelkowski! Krasinska Vichelkowski! last few 
few minutes when I made one spectacular play. I kicked a field goal from the 16-yard line. This wouldn't have been unusual, except that the fullback was still holding the ball <laughs> as it went between the goal posts. The crowd went wild, and the fullback was a little sore, too. <laughs> Again, they started to cheer. K-R-A-C-I-N-S-K-A-V It was then that I decided to change my name to Smith. <laughs> Steve Smith. When I graduated from high school, I had offers to play football for many colleges. Washington and Lee. William and Mary. David and Bathsheba. <laughs> But I finally decided to accept a scholarship to Craig University. So early that fall, I found myself in the registrar's office, where the dean's secretary was filling out my entrance application. Now, let's see, Steve Smith, Steve Smith. Oh, here's your card. Now, tell me, what is your height? Five feet, 11. Your weight? 173. Color of your eyes? Oh, they're blue, aren't they? <laughs> Bluer than the coach at USC. <laughs> now, uh, what career do you expect to follow upon graduation? I'm going to be a psychiatrist. Uh, what made you decide to become a psychiatrist? Last month, my uncle died and left me a couch. <laughs> Well, uh, that's all the questions, and, um... Oh, just one second. You're here on a football scholarship, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. In that case, you'll be provided with tuition, room, and board, and you'll be given $100 a month to spend. Do I have to spend it? <laughs> no. Uh, now, of course, um... You and all the other football players will have to earn this money. I understand. What will my job be? Well, in the dean's office, there's an eight-day clock. And I'm supposed to wind it? No, the fullback winds it. Your job is to see that he does. <laughs> Under the burden of this assignment, I began my first year at Craig University. I'll never forget the day I met our famous football coach. I remember how he walked into the dressing room and said... All right, you men. I want all the linemen to go out and practice tackling. The ends brush up on pass receiving. Halfbacks will put in two hours each bucking the line. The fullback will spend the whole day trying to kick field goals. And you, you're playing quarter, aren't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> what shall I do? Scratch my back. <laughs> this was a thrilling moment for me. At last I had met that great coach, Itchy Day. <laughs> As I stood there scratching his back, he looked at me and yelled, Do it again! Do it again! Harder! Harder! Do it again! Do it again! Harder! Harder! Now, wait a minute, Coach. I don't want to do this. I was the big high school football star. Ah, yes, but you're in college now, and everybody starts from scratch. <laughs> hmm. And another thing, we observe strict training here. Yes, sir. Yes, that means no parties, no dancing, and no dates with girls. But, Coach, if we can't date the girls, don't the girls get lonesome? No, some lumberjack keeps chasing them. <laughs> what? <laughs> All through our freshman year, Coach Day kept us in rigid training. He was a strict disciplinarian, and when it came to football, he was a perfectionist. Other coaches trained their players by having them throw forward passes through an automobile tire. Coach Day used a lifesaver. <laughs> With my glasses, that was a cinch. We finished our season unbeaten, and to celebrate our success, the college had a big dance for all the players. It was then that I saw her. Hello, handsome. She was beautiful. And I had a hunch she was popular, too. She was wearing 164 fraternity pins. <laughs> no dress, just fraternity. <laughs> she smiled and came jingling towards me. <laughs> Before I knew it, we were dancing together. Gee, you dance swell. Well, thanks. Say, you're on the football team, aren't you? Uh-huh. How did you know? 
You're stepping on my feet with your spiked shoes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Gee, you're a beautiful girl. You know, I wish you and I could... Uh, wait a minute. Do you mind if I say something? No. Papa, dinner is ready. <laughs> That made me admire her even more. For though she was the most popular girl in school, she still thought of her poor hungry father in Plainfield. I didn't see her again till the following fall, right before our first game with Powell University. I'll never forget that day. As our team came out on the gridiron, the huge throng cheered, and our glee club sang our school song. <laughs> You gotta be a football hero To get along with the beautiful girl In spite of all a million dollars can do A tackle or two will mean more to you The fact that you are rich or handsome Won't get you anything in curves You gotta be a football hero To get along with the beautiful girl You gotta smoke that fine tobacco to really know why a lucky is best You gotta light a lucky Then as you puff You'll know sure enough That no puff is rough A lucky strike is better tasting A lucky strike wins every test You gotta smoke that fine tobacco To really know why a lucky is best L-S-M-F-T L-S-M-F-T for me Lucky, lucky, rah, rah, rah Buy a carton, sis, boom, ba. A lucky strike is better tasting. It's round and firm and fully packed. Mm. A lucky strike is made much better. That's not a claim, no, so that is a fact. And we can prove it. All together, let's be happy and go lucky thrown for a loss. On our next two plays, we were stopped cold. The opposing team had the biggest line in football. His name was Don Wilson. <laughs> Once I ran around his end and was out of bounds by 10 years. <laughs> but although he was my opponent, I had to admire his ability. Nice tackle, Wilson. It was tough stopping you. I like that football uniform you're wearing. Thank you. I've never seen such big shoulders. What do you got them padded with? My stomach. <laughs> the game remained a scoreless tie until the last quarter, when I intercepted a forward pass and ran it back for a touchdown. The crowd went wild. K-R-A-C-I-N. I changed it. I changed it. It's Smith now. <laughs> We won that game, seven to nothing, and the next three games, too. But then I ran into trouble. Because of all the time I spent on the football field, I neglected my studies. Of all of my subjects, I was poorest in Latin. And one day in class, I was forced to admit to the Latin professor that I hadn't studied the lesson. <laughs> I'm sorry, professor. I am not prepared. Oh, for shame. <laughs> Perhaps if you ask me another question, I might be able to answer it. Very well. I'll translate this. When Julius Caesar left Egypt to return to Rome, he said to Cleopatra, Hox imperis a victim quo for sherry posset pluribus fidelium marcus agrarium. Hmm, I don't know, Professor. What is Hox imperis a victim quo facer posset pluribus <laughs> Fiddle and Marcus Agrarium Fiddle Mead. Uh, uh, <laughs> Wipe your chin and try that again. <laughs> what does Hox and Paris a victim quo facere facet pluribus fidelium Marcus Agrarium mean? When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> oh. And I hope you'll be better prepared for tomorrow's lesson. Yes, sir. What are we studying tomorrow? The works of Augustus V, Horatio V, Octavius V, and Cassius the fifth. Love them fifths. I studied my Latin hard, and he finally passed me with a mark of 86 proof. 
<laughs> he had grown into a professor of distinction. Then came the day of our final game of the season. We were undefeated, and a victory now would mean the conference championship. Every seat in the stadium was filled. What a thrill I felt as the pregame ceremony started and our school band took the field. All eyes were on the band, dressed in their gleaming uniforms, as they marched around the field playing. <laughs> because this time he was plugged in. <laughs> then the game started, and it was a brutal, hard-fought contest. The first half ended in a scoreless tie. We went back to our dressing room, and our coach looked at us and said, <laughs> This wasn't a commercial. We were holding secret signal practice. Then the second half started. The game remained deadlocked until the fourth quarter when we got a break. I intercepted a pass. I broke away from the safety man, had a clear field for a touchdown when I suddenly realized it was all in vain. There was a handkerchief on the play. Angrily, I rushed up to the referee and said, Did you drop your handkerchief? Ooh, dinner! <laughs> What's the penalty for? Your backfield was in motion. What? You never should have taken those rumba lessons from Arthur Murray. The game resumed, and with one minute left to go, the crowd and my producer were going wild. I received the ball and faded way back and threw a long forward pass to the fullback. He grabbed it in midfield. He evaded two tacklers and headed for the goal line. He crossed the 30, the 20, the 10, over the goal line, into the zen end zone, up into the stand. And then he started chasing the girls. It was at that moment that I realized that he was the lumberjack. So it was he and not I who was Saturday's hero. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first, Lucky's Taste Better. Yes, there's better taste in Lucky Strike because Lucky's fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco goes into a cigarette that is the best made of all five principal brands. These are not just claims. They're facts that prove Lucky's are made better in every way. Facts verified by leading laboratory consultants. One of these, Froling and Robertson of Richmond, Virginia, reports, It is our conclusion that Lucky Strike is the best made of these five major brands. So don't be misled by the smokescreen of claims and empty promises made by other cigarettes. Remember the proven facts of Lucky Strike quality. Enjoy the mild, rich taste of fine tobacco in the cigarette that smokes smoother because it's made better. The cigarette that tastes better, Lucky Strike. You'll prove it yourself by trying a carton of Luckies today. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the tenth program of this series, and we'll be with... Oh, get that, will you, Mary? Okay. Hello? Yes, this is Mary. Oh, Papa, you're having dinner at home? Then you heard me. Papa, it's silly for you and Mama not to talk to each other. Oh, all right, if you want me to, I'll do it. Jack, let me at that microphone. Huh? Mama, pass Papa the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Good night, Mama. Good night, Papa. Good night, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, our stockpile of blood plasma has been gravely depleted by the demands of the Korean campaign, and it's imperative that action be taken to ensure an adequate supply ready for immediate use. So please go to the blood bank in your cities and contribute. It's needed badly. This is an urgent request. In the Los Angeles area, the telephone number is Dunkirk 45261. Dunkirk 45261. Remember, the gift of blood is a gift from the heart. This is Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night presented by Lucky Strike. Consult your newspaper for time and station. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. The Jack Benny program is heard by our armed forces overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>